OK, alors. Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to this evening's session. This is the second session of yoga in our six week block. I do hope you find it beneficial. Um, I'm just going to shortly pass you over to Annie, our instructor. But just to remind everyone that of course all of our support is free. But if you can and you're able to, we would welcome a £3 donation um, for this evening's session. And you can find the details on our website about how to donate or you can go to our GoFundMe page and you'll find us under the Help Us to Help Others campaign. Um, and also just to confirm that this evening's event is recorded. Um, it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel at a later date, but only Annie will be on our screens. Okay, so I'll just pass you over now. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to tonight, guys. But I'm just first thing I'm going to say is I have to apologise for my voice. It's shocking. Um, I've had a really bad like throat thing. So this is the first class I've taught all week. So fin fingers crossed, we're all good. We're okay, and my voice holds out. So it's not my usual yoga voice. So sorry about that. So let me kick off with the disclaimer. Get that out of the way, then we'll have a chat, okay? <clears throat> So when practicing yoga online, it's up to the individual to assess whether they're ready for the class they have chosen, in this case, fertility yoga. Obviously, if you suffer from any specific injuries or disease, it is best to consult with your doctor first. The practice of yoga asanas or poses, that's just our word for poses, requires you, the practitioner, to gauge the safety of your practice within your personal physical limitations it is better to build up slowly rather than force and strain. While one may feel exertion, one should also feel relaxed. The techniques and suggestions presented in this webinar are not intended to substitute for proper medical advice. So you should always consult your doctor before beginning any new exercise program. Um, both Fertility Network and me, Annie Perry, assume no responsibility for injuries suffered while practicing these techniques. Out the way again, we've done it, that's it done. So um, you're very, very welcome. Um, and hopefully a lot of you have come back from last, from starting last week, the second in our six week block. And I know I had a lot of beginners last week, so um, I'm interested to hear what you thought and how you felt like with your first try of yoga, really interested in that. So if you pop a wee comment in the chat, just whenever, even at the end, I would appreciate it. Um, and welcome if you are new with me tonight. Um, so it's just always the same. We just want you, I really just want you to listen to your body. It's not about touching your toes. It's not about hitting targets or anything like that. It's about coming to the mat as you are tonight as your own little perfect version of yourself. So if you're feeling low, that's fine. If you're feeling quite good, that's great too. But just listen to your body and listen to what it needs. If you are post transfer or retrieval, um, if you're on a assisted reproductive technology route, then 48 hours with no yoga postures at all, okay? Just taking it easy, just doing breath work, just doing meditations, okay? Um, I think that's it. So I'm just going to quickly say again. Um, yeah, you should be okay. I think I'll just check in the chat. Hang on a wee second. Okay, so again, it's just taking it really, really easy and I'll try and keep you right during the sessions. Okay, thanks for that little comment. Um, <clears throat> just on my voice, if I come up and mute, it's because I just need a good cough and I'm not going to do that like into the microphone. Um, 
Okay, let's go. Let's just see if my voice holds out. Okay, guys. Oh, yes. And I'm going to share the music. I don't like doing that when I'm chatting at the start. So let me just share some nice background music for you guys. Okay, and we're going to do a little opening meditation. So I'm going to move over to my mat and I'm going to tell you what our little theme is tonight. Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, so our theme is actually on gratitude, right? But bear with me while I explain. Because you're, you're obviously coming to this session, you're going through um, struggles with your fertility, thinking about gratitude can be the very, very, very last thing in your mind, okay? I'm going to explain why it's important, okay? So research has shown that people who practice gratitude meditation regularly have lower blood pressure, better immunity, and a generally improved mood. Okay, so what's not to love? However, I do appreciate that when you're going through a really tough time, it can be really, really hard to do to practice gratitude. So this opening meditation is quite a good way of doing it because it starts off with like literally your body connecting with the mat. And you're grateful for that okay so it kind of starts with foundation and builds up which i think is quite good because if you are in a place where you you're finding it difficult to practice gratitude and opening your heart to gratitude keeping it simple like that it's just a really nice way to start okay so um what we're going to do is we're going to do a little gratitude meditation to start and then it's all about opening our heart to gratitude okay so this is i think i mentioned this last week it's not about toxic positivity and telling you you have to be positive all the time, telling you you have to be grateful for things all the time. You know I am not about that at all in any way, shape or form. However, that being said, trying to find little things to be positive about and be grateful for can really, really help you with your mindset, okay? Really, really help you. Um, be quite mindful and that's what we're trying to do with yoga we try and live just in this present moment because that's all we really have okay and that with that in mind you're just living in the present it can help take some burdens off your shoulders if we're just trying to relax and move our bodies listen to our bodies at the present moment okay I hope that makes sense so like I said this series of appreciation or gratitude we're going to do starts from the foundations and move to more subtle forms of gratitude, okay? So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is just bring ourselves into a, a, a comfortable position for you, okay? So a cross-legged position on your mat could be quite good, all right? You may want to, you may be feeling absolutely shattered and you just want to lie down. Happy for you to do that as well. Remember, listen to your body, listen to what it needs, okay? A little sip off my hot lemon. Okay. All right. So, as we always start our practice, we close our eyes, okay? This just helps us with the kind of first step to mindfulness, okay? This helps us cut off all the visual stimuli around us and focus within and ask ourselves a series of questions as to how we feel tonight. Because quite often, so even when I've said to you, come into the mat as you are, you might be sitting thinking, well, actually, I even don't even know how I feel. Maybe I just feel numb tonight, or maybe, you know, just we're going to ask ourselves, and we're just, and maybe the answer is numb, and that's fine, okay? So just close your eyes and turn within for a little bit. Focus on the breath. By that, I don't mean start doing big, mad, deep breaths. Just notice what the breath's doing at this moment in time. Notice the breath. Notice your frame of mind. Notice the physical body. How does it feel? Does it feel weary? Does it feel full of energy? Get 
in to ask the breath to slowly deepen and move the breath into more of a soft belly breath. So I want you to take your focus downwards in the body. I want you to take your focus to the lower belly and I want you to see if you can make the lower belly rise and fall with the breath. Try and just have a little look out for any aches or pains in the body. And breathe deeply. Okay, so I'm now going to read six um, statements. Right. None of them might resonate with you. All of them might resonate with you. I'm going to read them and try and repeat them after me in your mind's eye, okay? I bring to mind the foundations from which I arose and I am genuinely grateful for being given life. It is a gift. I am in awe of my body, how it allows me to give and receive, love and share, work and live my life, and without judgment of its shape or health, I send it love and thanks. I love and appreciate my strength, my courage and confidence to walk my path, to hold my head high and my ability to stand up when needed. I am grateful for the love I receive daily, the small acts of kindness, the generous loving gifts of nature, creation, and my relationships. I send love and appreciation to all those who honour the world with healing, with loving words and expressions. Thank you. I appreciate and realise the importance of my insight, visions and messages that I receive. May I be open to listening for them daily so that I can see with clarity and with honesty. Okay, so those are the six statements. So you can see that they start off very much from a physical form and build up on a more spiritual sort of dimension. Okay, we're now going to open our eyes and just take in your little yoga space around you. We're moving ourselves um, into a more everyday state of consciousness. We're moving out of our opening meditation. Hope some of that resonated. Don't worry if it didn't. <coughs> Sometimes it's just quite nice. And if you're not feel if you can't automatically think of things to be grateful for, someone just gives you a nudge, like a little, almost like a little journal prompt or something like that. Okay, so now we're going to get moving, all right? So, um, just 
having a quick check at my plan. Right, there are a few that I'm going to suggest not for the second half of the cycle, but for the most part, we're good to go for all parts of the cycle. The one to pay most attention to is menstruation. So if you are menstruating, then your energy levels will be depleted. So we try and respect that. And it's about restoring those energy levels, not taking away from them, okay? Um, right, so we're going to get moving, okay? So the first posture we're going to do is one that I do quite a lot, and it's stretching of the soul. Um, I can't even remember if we did it last week. It's like we did. And um, we're going to do it with a nice heart opener because we're going to really focus on the heart space opening. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to take this off. I put it on to try and keep my my throat warm. <coughs> um, I don't. I don't think I can practice with one. <laughs> It wasn't just a fashion statement, it was just to keep me warm. Okay, so this is our stretching of the soul. It's this, it's uncomfortable, right? It's really uncomfortable. But notice that if you focus on your breath and not the, the discomfort, the breath expands, not the discomfort. The discomfort won't expand. What we focus on expands, okay? So for this, it's like a kneeling thunderbolt with a stretching of the soul, okay? So we tuck the toes under to make sure your knees are just nicely under your hips. And then we're going to invite our pelvis to sit on our heels. And you get a little sensation, don't you? Now, for some people, it's really hard for me to judge because I can't see you guys. For some people, it's like, no, no way, I can't, I can't. What? Just sit within the discomfort. I don't want pain. I want discomfort, okay? So the weight of the body is going to intensify that. So we're sitting on our heels. <coughs> then we're going to swim our hands behind us. Sometimes we have them placed over our heart, which is lovely. But I just want you to bring your hands behind and link them and push them away so that you feel, I like, would you feel that little rotation of the shoulder that draws the shoulder? quite far back and it in, in turn it lifts the breastbone so we're just going to lift up the arms a little bit just gently nothing too ridiculous and you're going to breathe and focus on lovely long deep breaths in through the nose and out through the nose And then you're just going to release that and you're going to bring the hands down and then you uncurl the toes and feel that blissful uncurl, that sense of blissful release. And then come to all fours, okay? So from all fours, we're going to just tap our feet. I love to just tap tops of the feet here after this posture, okay? Right, now just want to open up through the front of the body with a cow position, okay? So for this, we, I like to start at the pelvis, okay? So right now we're starting with a beautiful straight spine and pelvis, okay? And you've, your sit bones, your two sitting bones that you were sitting on, they're kind of just pointing to the, the wall behind you, okay? So what you're going to start to do is start to uncurl that and take the sit bones as if you're trying to get them to shine shine point up at the ceiling okay so you're arching well you're doing it's not really an arch it's a drop of the spine so that it starts to have quite a exaggerated curve through the lumbar curve of the spine and then I want you to take your gaze up towards the ceiling so we're now focusing into the throat to release the voice and we're focusing into the heart opening the heart to gratitude so breathe deeply here then start again at the pelvis okay so start to un so start to bring it back to neutral but then keep it going so we're now taking the tailbone and tucking it under quite exaggerated and then we're taking quite a length through the spine, pressing up and away from the hands and dropping the chin onto our chest. Yeah. 
and from there we're going to tuck the toes under and I want you just to start walking the hands back and we're moving into a really gentle standing forward fold okay so lift up your knees press the feet into the mat fold the arms over and just have a little rock side to side drop your head relax your head <clears throat> so I want you to do that for several breaths Okay, then from there, I want you to start folding up, but stop yourself when you're about halfway so that you're a number, like you're like in the shape of a number seven with your body, okay? So I'm, I'm about halfway, right? My body's parallel to the floor and there's a more of a, maybe more of a straightness through the backs of the legs, okay? And then with your hands, I want you to swim them out. I feel like you're almost if you're like flying. <laughs> I want you to just focus on the heart space here. So we're really often here, we're almost wrapping the shoulder blades towards each other. And our hands are parallel to the floor, our backs parallel to the floor. And just nudge your gaze forward again. So we're opening through the throat, through the heart. And then start to come up. Okay, so we're going to stay standing for the next one. I'm going to need a sip of this. Come on, voice, you can do it. I literally have been whispering all week, which I actually think my husband's quite enjoyed, if I'm honest. <laughs> I think he's quite enjoyed the piece. <laughs> but it's slowly coming back and hopefully it'll last for you guys. Okay, so from standing, we're going to move into a nice posture called Eagle Pose, Garudasana, okay? So this is quite a tight old pose, tight through the arms and tight through the legs, okay? But it's really, really nice and um, it's a balance. And I always think balances are like, just have a laugh with them, okay? We're not serious here. We're not trying to be like Instagram yogis, like trying to create a perfect pos posture. The, only th the thing about balance pose is, is that they make you really concentrate and that's good for mindfulness isn't it because everything else goes out the mind okay but if you fall over well i don't need to fall over but if you come out of it then we just have we just we're light-hearted is what i'm saying okay so um right so let's start with the arms because i do appreciate it. i've got a lot of beginners on here so i just want to just want to really make sure you're getting clear instructions okay <coughs> okay so again, this always, this always affects my microphone, this posture though, because it's so tight in. Okay, so we're creating a bind with the arms, okay, which is going to help release tension through the shoulders, tension through the upper back, which if you're feeling a bit stressed, that's where it goes, isn't it? All up like this, we're trying to release it. Okay, so take the hands open, okay, and then we're just, oh, how nice does that feel? Open your heart. Then... You're gonna, is that, you're gonna give yourself a cuddle, right? You're gonna give yourself a wee hug. So you're gonna take your right hand on top, your left hand under, and give yourself a wee cuddle, okay? So I'm not just doing this for a laugh, and it is quite nice to give yourself a cuddle, but what I want you to feel is how nice and open that feels through the shoulder blades, and try and roll the shoulder blades down a little, like as in track them down the spine. Then we're gonna try and bring the backs of the hands together, okay? the backs of the arms, the backs of the hands, see how that feels. And maybe you can bring your left hand onto your right palm. Now that's like quite a reach for some people because you might have a lot of tension in your shoulders. Just hug onto yourself, just stay there if that's the case, okay? Right, so we've got our arm bind. Now we want to create a bind with the legs, okay? So our right leg is gonna be our sort of trunk of our tree. Okay, so we're, we're not doing a tree pose, but you know what I mean, it's our foundation. So we press through the right foot. We feel quite weighted through the whole of the right foot. And check your pelvis here, okay? Don't want you to pop it out to the side. Okay, we want it neutral, okay? Even though we've sort of taken the weight out of the left foot. Then lift the left knee up, okay? Neutral pelvis still. Then bring the left foot and try, if you can, and wrap it behind the right leg, okay? 
I appreciate that might be quite difficult to just pop it even onto the shin at the front, just somewhere you can create a balance. Okay, now there's a sense of opposition here, okay? We're anchoring down through the foot and we're almost kind of sitting down a little and we're rising up with the hands, okay? And we're just breathing deeply. And then we'll release. <laughs> I was wobbly as there. <laughs> See when you've got a cold swell, it's even worse because your wee under ears are all over the place. But a nice blissful release, nice sense of release into the shoulders, okay? Even roll your shoulders up and down, okay? <coughs> we're obviously going to do the other side so that we're nice and balanced. Okay, so exactly the same way to get in it, okay? Swim the hands nice and wide. Heart is open. Just make sure you're doing the opposite, okay? So left hand on top. Make your bind, okay? Then right foot, slightly more centralised. Nice neutral pelvis. Lift up with the right knee. Bring the foot around the back if you can, okay? Oh, I'm all over the place tonight, okay? Find your centre. It does help as well to just give a little bit of a lift at the pelvic floor and a little bit of a nudge in with the navel towards the spine. And then we're going to release, okay? Roll the shoulders, okay? Excuse me. All right, so another standing posture, a warrior two, okay? So we're going to take our, I'm taking myself up towards the top of my mat, and I'm going to take a nice big step back with the right foot, okay? Not too massive, it's not a lunge, we're not going too wide. You have to still be able to think, yeah, I could, I could easily step back up fairly easily. Okay, so warrior two. So for this, nice openness in the hips here, kind of space through the hips, space through the belly and length through the belly and the torso, space in the heart and relax in the shoulders, okay? What to think of, but that's what we're aiming for, okay? So we're going to kiss. The first thing to always start with is your foundations, okay? We're feeling the feet quite equally weighted and we're feeling them almost press away. Take your little thumb, and bring it into this joint here. Just give a little press so that you feel you're sinking down. We're really wanting to get blood flow moving through these big muscles up through the pelvis, nourishing into the womb, okay? Relax your shoulders and then take your hands and bring them away from each other so that they're about parallel to the floor, okay? But not, not hunching up with the shoulders, we're rolling them back and down. Heart is open. Gaze is just over the front middle finger. Breathe deeply. Okay, just drop your arms now. Okay, and then we're obviously going to do that warrior two on the other side, but we're going to have a nice wide leg forward fold before we do. So all you need to do is literally turn your feet so that they point like up to the long end of your mat and just check that they're in line with each other. <coughs> okay. Right, so we're going to do a little variation with our wide leg forward fold that adds in little squats, okay? Nice little pulsing movement, okay? So we're gonna hinge forward. We're gonna keep our heart open. We're not gonna roll the shoulders and we're gonna keep everything open. And we're gonna hinge forward and we're gonna bring our hands towards the floor. 
So if you can't do that without bending your knees, then fire away and bend your knees, okay? Not about, no prize this, okay? So big bend in the knees and walk your hands out a little bit in front, okay? And then we're gonna bend into the knees and we're gonna take our sit bones towards the floor. Then we're gonna lift, okay? And then we're gonna bring the sit bones kind of high and like towards the back, okay? Press down. Inhale, lift. So inhale, you sort of straighten up. Exhale, press down. Okay. And then we'll just walk ourselves back and come back up, right? And then let's move to warrior two on the other side, okay? If you slid a little deeper, as quite often, maybe just let your feet back in, okay? Turn your right foot, okay? So the back foot goes to like 45 if you can. I mean, don't, nothing's exact here, but like the hip should feel nicely open. Shouldn't be pulling on any knees or anything like that, okay? But it's quite a deep posture because we're not taking the hips forward, we're opening them. So you can't sink fairly, fairly deep in a warrior two. Hands out. Relax your shoulders. Open your heart. Drop down, okay? And then turn the feet back. Let's go for another wide leg forward fold. Seeing as we're here, why not? I love them for this fertility yoga. So nice, so calming, so stimulating, so, so nice. So we're doing another, okay? We won't do the squats this time. We'll just fold over like a normal wide leg forward fold, okay? So hinge from your hips and fold forward. So regardless of where your hands go, they might just still be hanging out in midair. Try and take your gaze between your legs and out behind you, okay? Want to feel the head relax, the neck relax. Okay. And then slowly hinging up, okay? So walk your feet in, but not all the way, okay? Still, I find it hard to tell measurements and stuff, but like me, just walk in. So they're not, feet aren't doing it below the hips, we're still open a little bit. Let's do a nice goddess squat, okay? Or the goddesses that you are, okay? So for this, feet don't point forward, there's a 45 degree sort of angle here, okay? But the heels are still in line with each other. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, then we're gonna bring our hands over our heart center, okay? Press through the feet, keep the knees quite wide and sit down into a squat. Okay, try not to stick your bum away out and just have natural way of the pelvis. And then come up, okay? Just a nice simple one, getting lots of blood flow moving. Okay, so we're gonna move into a nice gentle camel position. Lovely heart opener. keeping it gentle okay knees below hips just keep the tops of the feet on the floor sometimes that adds that stretching of the sole again which is nice to do in camel but we've done that already okay so just tops of the feet and just simply hands onto the lower back roll your shoulders up back and down 
relax them. Open the heart space and begin to send your hips forward and begin to take your gaze up. So it's a super gentle camel we're doing tonight. There are much deeper variations of this. But I just want you to keep it gentle tonight. Okay, and lift to a straight spine and then bring your sit bones onto your heels. Take your knees wider. You want a nice wide-legged child's pose now. I want you to fit your little belly and your ribs in, beside, in between your thighs, okay? So begin to walk yourself forward with the hands. It's extended child's pose we're going for. So the hands are coming straight out in front and we're just relaxing down. Taking the forehead towards the mat, relaxing the heart space, and then that's where you're going to stay for a good five to ten breaths. Okay, breathing deeply, feeling the breath. So we're feeling the ribs move onto the thighs and contract down. Feel the belly expand and contract. Also, really focus on the heart space when you're in child's pose. It's a lovely release into the heart, it's a lovely release into the spine shoulders try and keep tension out of them try and feel like the shoulders are drifting down in a way <coughs> okay and then move yourself back up okay and then just come to all fours all right and then we're going to do a posture that's a little bit similar to that in the sense that we're releasing the heart, we're relaxing the shoulders, we're releasing tension. Um, and it's called puppy dog pose, okay? So we come up so that our knees are directly below our hips, all right? So our knees were quite wide there in our child's pose, so we want the knees below the hips. And then we want to do the same kind of thing with the arms extending forward, okay? But this time, the sit bones are quite high, so they're kind of up off the mat, okay? So we're taking our hands forward <clears throat> and then we're just going to release the heart space down towards the floor. But the difference being now is the sit bones are still quite high. Come back up to all fours, and all fours is where we're going to stay for the next couple of postures, okay? So, <clears throat> I just want to start releasing into the hips, okay? So, um, we're doing like a, a circle of the hips, which I think we might have done last week. It's a Kriya exercise, it's a cleansing exercise. So I do it quite often because I really like it for releasing into the hips, releasing tension, releasing emotions, releasing things that we don't need that we've put there, okay? So for this, we're going to take, we're going to keep the hands on the floor, both of them. We're going to keep the left knee still on the mat. We're going to lift the right one up and we're going to flex the sole, okay? So we're just asking you to lift it to the side so that it comes up at about a right angle to start with. And then begin to circle that knee. Notice what's going on in the hip. 
this might this circle might be free and easy you might be happy as Larry doing it you might feel that you're the complete opposite and you're feeling so much stagnation and tension and do you know what that will probably vary week on week day by day and it's quite nice to check in with it go the other way with the circles as well so whatever direction you were going come round and do the opposite way keep focusing on the breath sorry I'm just stopping but if you can keep going for another few rotations Focus is on the breath at all times, okay? Even if your mind's gone a place, just invite it back in with the focus on the breath. Okay, bring your knee back down now. I stopped prematurely there, sorry. I'm just um, waiting for you guys to catch up. Okay, so we're going to the other side. So we're going left knee, flex the foot, and begin your circles. How does it feel on that side? Any easier? Worse? About the same? Go the other way as well. And then return back to, to table pose. Just give your hips a nice sway side to side. And then turn that into circles of the pelvis. All the time, deep breaths, tuning into your body, listening to what your body's trying to tell you. Okay. okay just sit down on your heels for now. I'll talk us through the next one. Thank you. Okay, so I'm doing one prone posture tonight, and that's it. Just a nice gentle baby cobra if you are um, in, the, in the two in the second half of your cycle after ovulation um, perhaps just give this one a miss and just come into um, child's pose okay and it's definitely not suitable if you would suspect that you might be pregnant okay so no cobra for you guys just gentle child's pose or even do you remember that cat and cow posture that we did Going back to that okay so let's come down onto our tummies and spend the first couple of breaths just creating a bit of length okay so you want to feel your your legs lengthen away from your pelvis okay um so we're going to bring our hands just underneath our shoulders and we're, our hands are nice and spread and we're just rising up okay I still want you to feel a firm connection with the pelvis okay so I want you to feel the pubic bone connected I want you to feel length through the legs I don't really want you to be clenching your bum okay so just even shake from side to side just to release okay and just wrap your elbows in towards you a nice softness in the elbows and just a soft gaze above the head and 
and also, sorry, most important part, I want you to feel your heart center expand here. I want you to feel the heart moving forward. And then just soften down, rise up and move to child's pose again. begin to walk back okay right so time check yeah we've got time i want to do some seated postures okay <coughs> they're just going to invite a nice gentle twist into the body okay nothing too um, drastic with these okay but a really nice toning um not toning that's not the right word i want to use stimulating for the inner organs okay wanting to give them a little squeeze out of the blood that's that's there squeeze it all out and then let it all release back okay so the first one is just a gentle um, um so casting a twist okay so come into um this nice cross-legged position okay and um if you want a more gentle twist you stay you keep your hand on the same side, okay? Does that make sense? So if you want a gentle twist, you keep your right arm and hand at your right knee. If you want to go deeper, you take it across the body, okay? Um, either's right or wrong. One's just a bit more stimulated, so probably more focused to energies around ovulation, that kind of time, okay? All right, so set points connected. Spine lifting and lengthening, shoulders relaxed. Take your left hand and just place it on the floor behind you and either right hand onto right knee or right hand onto left knee and lift and lengthen and gaze behind. Okay, so we want to start feeling a twist through the spine that's going to help kind of massage into the kidneys and the adrenals and also into the womb space as well. Okay, come back round to the front. And we'll do that same thing on the other side, okay? Lifting and lengthening. Easing behind. Okay, back round to the front. So now we're going to go wide with our legs into a wide leg forward fold, okay? So take our legs as wide as they can. Okay, don't, right, as soon as you do that, you might find you started to slump because you're trying to keep your legs nice and wide, okay? Your first focus should be into your sit bones, okay? So right here where my fingers are, focus there. And lift, can you feel that nice lift if you lift up and out of the pelvis all the way through the crown of the head, okay? Shoulders relaxed, drawn back, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we're going to um, just kind of fold towards one leg, then fold towards the other. Okay, but it's kind of a twist, isn't it? Because we're lifting and we're just looking towards that side and then folding over. Don't worry about where your hands eventually reach to okay just focus on not slumping not letting the pelvis do like tuck under like that try and keep it nice and lifted okay all right lift and lengthen through the spine turning looking at your right foot lifting and folding over just reaching the hands forward Wherever they go, you might stop at the thighs or the ankles or the shins, that's fine. Just try and release into the posture. Good. 
Then you're going to start walking your hands, okay? But keep them in a kind of, imagine a big rainbow in between your feet. Try and walk them along the rainbow. Okay, and then stop halfway. You're still keeping your shoulders relaxed. You're still keeping your heart open. You're still hinging from the hips. And you're just having a fold over at this nice central position. And then begin to kind of follow that curve of the rainbow over to the other foot. Okay, walk back to the top of the rainbow and have another fold. And then come back in. I will just have a few breaths here. I can honestly say I've never taught that talking about rainbows. I've not, I, like, I swear to God, <laughs> I've been teaching for about eight, nine years now and I've never used that cube, but it's quite nice. Always nice to think about rainbows, isn't it? It's quite nice to think about that big curve. Okay, right, so what else do I want to do? Um, I think we'll do one more seated posture, then I want to do a few on our backs, okay? So for this, we're going to just simply hinge um, we're just going to um, like fold the right leg and draw that in, okay? So you're taking the right um, foot and you're bringing it on to your left thigh, okay? So pretty much the left leg's just stayed as it is there, but you're bending the right knee and just like feel that right knee kind of just, you know, have it to really just hinge towards the floor. We're not pushing it, just feeling gravity. Let it hinge, okay? So now our focus comes on it over this left leg. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry for the cough. Okay, so now we're focusing here, okay? So it's another little um, twist here, okay? So um, this is all really lovely and stimulating, but you can keep it quite gentle as well, okay? So we're going to be taking our left hand towards our left foot, okay? And then we're going to be opening up with the right shoulder, okay? So it's nice and open through the heart open through the front of the body okay so we're feeling the ribs open at the right side feeling the shoulder open and then we're lifting that right hand all the way up and over if that makes sense so we're not like looking at the right foot we're looking up and we're keeping an openness to the body and then we'll just lift up we won't spend a wild amount of time there do another couple of postures on our backs okay so this is called revolved head to knee pose so head to knee would be folded over but this is open and revolved through the torso okay lift up and over Okay, and lift, okay. So, I did say I want to do just a couple of um, reclined postures, okay, so we'll do that now. <clears throat> okay, so I want you to come onto your backs. I want you to keep, start off with your knees, bend your feet flat on the floor. If you've been coming to my classes for ages, we pretty much do this constructive rest posture every single week because I think it's really important for female health and menstrual health because it just helps to really release the psoas muscle, okay? So your heels aren't too close in towards your bum. They're nice and relaxed. Your feet are flat on the floor. Knees are directly below hips. <clears throat> and we're hopefully feeling a nice release into the hips. We're just going to breathe here for a few breaths, okay? We're looking at about five to ten breaths.
written i would ideally have liked to spend longer in that posture so if you do have time um after class or during the week just spend a good few minutes a day in that posture okay then we're going to bring the knees thighs feet together and then we're going to open them out like a butterfly so that the knees fall out to the side and the soles of the feet come together bring your hands and place them onto your womb space okay in fact um, we're going to just keep the right hand on the womb the left hand comes over your heart and just begin to breathe here front of your body is open your hands are providing a very healing gesture into the womb and into the heart the warmth of your hands is being transferred onto these areas your knees are just falling out to the side creating space through the hips and the pelvis and the womb. Focus on the breath again. Feel the breath rising and falling. There's no manipulation of the breath. Simply rising and falling. And then when you're ready, bring your knees together and just rock the knees side to side. And now we're going to make our way to final relaxation or shavasana position, okay? So this is a corpse pose at the end. So if you've never done yoga before, it is a posture in itself. It's not just simply lying down, okay? Um, this is where we release the body almost trying to consolidate our practice and um, really really good for just tapping into the parasympathetic side of your nervous system which we don't do enough of let's face it okay so hopefully my voice again will last a little bit longer i can feel it failing with every, with every minute that goes by and um, but hopefully it will last so i'm just going to do a nice body scan release for you and then i have a really powerful little oh just a powerful little message for you at the end okay i just love this little quote i found okay all right so <coughs> excuse me sorry i'm really sorry okay so you're lying on your back you're warm you're making yourself warm comfortable safe and secure so you're taking your time that's why I never, I never like to launch into, you know, our body scan and anything. But I want you to really make sure this is special time for you because you deserve this time, okay? So cushion, blanket, socks on. Get yourself comfortable so that you can release and let go. And then once you've done that, Allow your eyes to close over. So I'm just going to start off as you're settling down with another little nod to our theme of finding gratitude in the smallest of things, okay? And then we'll begin our um, release and our shavasana. Thank you for this breath. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this love. I acknowledge that life is a privilege. I appreciate the immense beauty of this world. I recognize that I have choices. And on this day, may I be open to grace and all that life has to offer me.
bring awareness to the softness of your skin, the texture of your clothes. Begin to feel gravity's heaviness in the back of the body. Lie down on your back and adjust your head so that the forehead and chin are parallel to the ceiling to create room in your throat. Feel the chest open and broaden. the back of your body spread to the edges of your mat. Ensure your spine still maintains its four curves on the floor. your body lying in your room. Without opening your eyes, sense the four walls, the ceiling and the floor. <coughs> Imagine your body lying on the floor as if you were looking at it from above. Take your attention to the sounds outside of you. The sounds far away. And the sounds close to you. Ease yourself into Savasana. Take a long, slow breath into the body. And as you exhale, Feel a warmth of relaxation flood you. Take your attention to your skin. Feel how it coats your entire body. Holding the bones in place. skull, the arms, the rib cage, the hips and the legs. As I name the bones, imagine each one is floating and suspended in water, being held on the tide of soft tissues. <coughs> skull, jaw, Collarbones, upper arms, lower arms, all ten fingers. Sternum, rib cage, front of the pelvis, back of the pelvis, upper thighs, 
lower thighs, all ten toes. <coughs> Your entire skeleton is floating, supported, and suspended. She is a real person, she struggles and she sparkles. She is no longer afraid to say what makes her angry, sad or what she thinks is unfair. She's not afraid to admit that at times she feels worthless, lost or not enough. She's refusing to hide from love, beauty, aliveness, magic and abundance. She won't edit the sad or messed up parts of her story or the holy magnitude of her triumphs to make anyone comfortable. She is a real person. She struggles and she sparkles. She is a real person. So as I always do, um, I'll leave you for a while just to have another few minutes resting replenishing, relaxing, and let you come out of your Shavasana at your own time, your own sweet time. So when it's time to do that, just begin slowly and feel the weight of your body and begin a slow and gradual process of moving to a more everyday state of consciousness, okay? So what I'm doing now is bowing to you all with real love and gratitude for practicing with me tonight. It's always a sacred time when we do our practice together and I so appreciate you coming and doing it with me. Um, and I'm wishing you all a great week ahead, okay? So I hope to see lots of you next week for week three of our six week block, okay? Take care. Thank you.